Hello, my name is Anton Chekhovtsov and I'm the chair of the Austria-based NGO Center for Democratic Integrity. We continue our video project in cooperation with the Ukrainian platform Analizui, discussing political and social developments in Europe in the context of the Russian war against Ukraine. And in today's video I'm going to talk about plans for establishing a special international tribunal that will deal with the Russian aggression, about the apparent involvement of Russian actors in terrorist activities in Spain, and about our findings on the presumably illegal transfer of Ukrainian miners from Austria to Russia. I hope you will find this video informative, so if you do, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you never miss our new videos. On the 19th of January, the European Parliament adopted a resolution that urges the EU and the international community to push for the creation of a special international tribunal to prosecute the crime of aggression against Ukraine perpetrated by the leadership of the Russian Federation and its allies. 472 members of the European Parliament voted for the resolution, 33 abstained and only 19 voted against. That was not the first resolution of the European Parliament that argued for the need to establish a special international tribunal on Russia's aggression against Ukraine. But it's important to reiterate that we indeed need such a special tribunal. Many European officials are still hesitating about this special tribunal. For example, German Minister of Justice Marco Buschmann recently said that the existing institutions such as the International Criminal Court, or ICC, needed to be protected and not weakened. And there are also mixed messages about the need for a special tribunal coming from Karim Khan, the prosecutor of the ICC. Now, I want to emphasize, it's not possible to use the ICC to prosecute the Russian leadership for the crime of aggression, because neither Russia nor Ukraine has ratified the Rome Statute of the ICC. So in our situation, the court simply has no jurisdiction over the crime of aggression, this mother of all crimes. This said, the ICC is investigating the developments in Ukraine, and it has jurisdiction over three other most serious international crimes. The crime of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. So the Special Tribunal on the Crime of Aggression will neither weaken the ICC nor affect its jurisdiction over other crimes, it will just complement the workings of the ICC. The ICC option with regard to Russia's crime of aggression could potentially work if we had full support of the United Nations. But unfortunately we cannot rely fully on the UN. Of course, the UN General Assembly has already recognized the aggression by the Russian Federation to be in violation of the UN Charter. The General Assembly has also agreed that the Russian Federation must be held to account for any violations of international law in or against Ukraine. But this is not enough. In order to refer the situation in Ukraine to the ICC, we need a relevant decision from the UN Security Council. And Russia is a permanent member there and will definitely veto any decision that will go against its interests. To reiterate, today the only chance to prosecute the Russian leadership for the Russian aggression against Ukraine is to create a special international tribunal, since the International Criminal Court, in the context of the Russian-Ukrainian war, has no jurisdiction over the crime of aggression. And one more important point. Some people, not all but some, who insist that it is the ICC that needs to deal with the Russian crime of aggression against Ukraine, do this on purpose to delay the prosecution of Russian criminals or even lead the process into a deadlock. The New York Times reports that Western officials believe that Russian military intelligence officers directed associates of a Russian far-right militant group to carry out a recent letter bomb campaign in Spain related to the country's support for Ukraine. The report mentions that the group in question is the Russian Imperial Movement, described as a radical group that has members and associates across Europe and military-style training centers in St. Petersburg. The article in the New York Times also adds that important members of the group have been in Spain and the police there have tracked its ties with far-right Spanish organizations. I warned about the terrorist threat of the Russian Imperial Movement as early as 2015. In particular, I wrote that members of the movement were involved in building an international network that would organize paramilitary camps and form volunteer international brigades that would be used in zones of military conflict. The leadership of the Russian Imperial Movement donated money to the Swedish chapter of the neo-fascist organization's Nordic Resistance and sent Russian volunteers to fight against the Ukrainian forces in eastern Ukraine. The Russian Imperial Movement also trained European neo-fascists at a paramilitary camp in the St. Petersburg area. Two of the neo-fascists they trained would later carry out a series of terrorist attacks in Sweden. Despite the warnings and the clear threat of right-wing terrorism, leading members of the Russian Imperial Movement were free to travel to Paris, Madrid, Washington DC, Vienna. Only in spring 2020 would the US designate the Russian Imperial Movement specially designated global terrorists. 
and Canada followed the US in 2021. In the EU, however, the movement is not considered as a terrorist organization, and this despite the fact that already in 2020 the Spanish Interior Ministry received an intelligence report saying that the Russian imperial movement advocated attacks on vital infrastructure in western states, and in particular had contacts with Spanish far-right groups. Clearly, there is no such thing as too many warnings about Russian right-wing terrorism in Europe. So let's give yet another warning and refer to the reports from December last year saying that the Russian neo-Nazi group Rusic, which had been actively fighting against Ukraine, was also looking for intelligence on border and military facilities in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The Austrian newspaper Der Standard reported that in the beginning of January this year, an employee of the Tyrolean Ombudsman office facilitated the apparently illegal transfer of two Ukrainian miners from Austria to Russia. In Austria, the miners were accommodated at a youth facility in Tyrol and they were transferred to Russia as part of the alleged family reunification. The Tyrolean Ombudsman who brought the miners to Russia did not inform the relevant Ukrainian authorities and we don't even know if the parents of the two Ukrainian kids stay in Russia voluntarily. I want to remind you here that Russia has already abducted hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian children and adults from occupied Ukrainian territories. The Tyrolean state official is currently suspended and according to one Green member of the Tyrolean parliament, the public prosecutor's office investigates the ombudsman for child abduction and transfer to a foreign power. It is important to watch this case closely because it seems to be yet another example of just how deeply the Russian influence has penetrated some European societies. At the moment, too many details about the case are unknown, but let me share with you several facts that may cast some light on the background of the case. The Austrian official involved in the case also holds a key position in the European Ombudsman Institute. The institute is headed by Dragan Milkov, a Serbian academic who was recently dismissed from his position of the president of the Council of the Law Faculty at the University of Novi Sad for unethical and disorderly work. One of the two vice presidents of the European Ombudsman Institute is Nina Karpachova, who used to be the first Ukrainian ombudsman and who was very closely linked to the pro-Russian political forces in Ukraine. And if you look at the board of the European Ombudsman Institute, you will see that citizens of the Russian Federation form the largest national group on the board. Perhaps the most notorious of the Russian members is Tatyana Maskalkova, a Putin loyalist appointed by the Kremlin to play the role of the chief Russian ombudsman. As the report in The Standard suggests, it was apparently Maskalkova who instructed the Tyrolean ombudsman to bring the two Ukrainian miners to Russia. According to our information, the ombudsman flew to Moscow via Ankara, so we have questions for the Turkish border police too, as they allowed a foreigner to cross the border together with two Ukrainian miners to whom he was not related. On the 9th of January, the Austrian ombudsman handed the Ukrainian kids over to the Russian so-called ombudsman Tatyana Moskalkova. Moskalkova claimed that the transfer of the Ukrainians had become possible thanks to her cooperation with the Russian foreign ministry, the Russian embassy in Austria and the Russian security services. The Austrian did not stay in Moscow long. Already on the 10th of January, he flew back to Ankara, where he and Moskalkova took part in a conference on human rights. And a few words about the Tyrolean ombudsman himself. As you may imagine, he is well known to Russian political actors. For example, in 2021, he was invited to take part in a fake collection observation mission organized by the Russian authorities to secure international praise of the Russian elections that took place that year. Make no mistake, only people who are friendly to the Kremlin are invited to participate in those fake monitoring missions. The Tyrolean ombudsman, however, did not manage to go to Russia at that time, apparently for technical reasons. But the mere fact that the Russian authorities placed confidence in him does tell us a lot about the nature of his relations with Russian political stakeholders. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, so do like it and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the European politics in the context of the Russian aggression against Ukraine.